want to uh, give us an elaboration there since we brought up that topic uh, people are aware of the intelligence unit that happen that that takes that that is uh, prevalent within the central bank of the country uh, then they would also go to the police in general to uh, make claims with regards to financial crimes um, leaving setting aside money laundering for a brief moment where are the key authorities that we need to look at, uh, Ms. Abrajita, when it comes to the topic of financial crimes? Yeah, it's the Anti-Money Laundering Act. Right. Uh, so, Anti-Money Laundering Act is dealing with this money laundering. It's specifically made because uh, in order to prevent this terrorist financing. So, we have to look into that. And there are a couple of enactments. Uh, like even Computer Crimes Act, because yeah. money, uh, since the the internet is there and uh, it is you know open to the whole world, it has become very uh, very difficult to limit financial crimes to one particular enactment. Right. So we it's a scattered legislation and uh, we have to pick and choose where it is. Even Security Exchange Commission Act deals with you know insider dealing and all. So there are a whole heap of facts. Uh, you, it all depends on the uh, scenario of the case. Even Computer Crimes Act, Data Privacy Act, all deals with all these. Right. Uh, I think uh, you, that is an area that you are, are quite an expert on, which is why we want to dedicate a separate segment on it, which is on electronic transactions. And uh, the previous time you were here, we were capable of talking a bit about data privacy and the, the electronic aspect of it. Uh, uh, Mr. Abrajita, if you can, uh, if we can just touch on the concept of terrorist financing now. Uh, when we look over the legislature, we see that there are a number of uh, uh, acts that have been brought forward to uh, generally what one would understand is the source of these funds have to be is a, is a key point of contention what are the other things that are really discussed within these enactments primarily with regards to either the expert in terrorist financing or for money laundering what are the key features there yeah they all discuss about the laundering of money how the people or uh, organizations they have to prove they have to show the source of where money comes as long as you can prove the source and prove that it is not illicit you can actually uh, get away from that but the problem is if somebody deposit money in your bank without your consent what will happen right. so that is a problem and also uh, uh, privacy theft uh, some in some countries or even in Sri Lanka there are a lot of computer crimes happen for laundering of money. Right. So these type of things, like you know, uh, if uh, you know, when it comes to terrorist financing, uh, if a, if a terrorist organization hack your bank account, what will happen? So there are a lot of things with regard to this issue issue to address. So it all depends on the scenario, as I told you. So uh, when we, you know, go on discussing this, you will understand more on this. Yeah. Uh, if if you if we could just uh, touch on that uh, within our first segment, maybe as a as a final question here, I want to ask you, what are the key? Uh, you know, before we go before we go into remedies, I wanted to ask you about the aspects that you believe require some form of reform, because I think that is an aspect that you have focused on quite some time to bring in new legislature compared compared to maybe Europe or maybe other countries that are dealing with. Uh, data privacy, theft, and all, all that, which is quite relevant to money laundering. Where do you believe that there are certain vacuums that we need to look at? Vacuums in the sense by now we have, uh, my feeling is that there's a wholesome legislation, but the problem is uh, with regard to social media fraud, there has to be regulations and monitoring processes. The problem is uh, now the f social media is the main uh, vector. Yeah. <laughs> which is used by these uh, fraudulent uh, the, the thieves. So what they do is that they, uh, actually this is called charity laundering. They have a charity organization. Right. Uh, they will have a page and they will ask for money for charity. So there are a lot of things like that. And also sometimes they will um, you know, publish uh, uh, this gift is yours. Right. So collect your gift. Likewise, so there are a lot of things. So we have to be very careful. My 
Personal feeling is that our people are not aware of this because there are a lot of uh, university students um, who get caught to this type of you know fraudulent activities.